Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. My name is Mehul and today Next.js 10 has just been launched in the next conf, which is still going on. As of now, you can see the conference is going on and I have watched a lot of um, people speak a lot of good stuff today. So it was super helpful. I think they would just keep the videos up so you can go to their channel to check that out. I'll probably leave a link in the description. But the story today is that next 10 has been launched so it has been launched a few hours ago you know seven hours to be precise and it brings a lot of neat and decent changes with it so i'm going to start off with what i believe are some of the most significant changes there are some little changes as well here and there but most of the changes are super cool so let's start with the first one which is my favorite which is the built-in image component and automatic image optimization this has been a very long awaited change or awaited feature for Next.js and it's finally here. By this, you can not only optimize your existing images, but also images which are externally hosted, right? And it is super cool because this happens on runtime, pretty much just like how Next.js is able to generate pages on runtime. It is, it is able to generate static good images on runtime as well and then once it generates it it's going to store it in a cache and then we'll be just delivering you with lightning fast speed so it does not avoid it avoids building images on build time so it is super exciting and super good because you can have dynamic sources for images as well which i use a lot of times on codedam.com so i'm going to show you that how it works let's just go to codedam.com and i have you know i have been sitting so far and i have made use of images component to convert images of codedam to use this particular component so let's go to courses for example so you see First thing you're going to see is that I'll scroll very fast at the bottom and you're going to see that this image was still loading, right? You could see that that image was still loading. So that was because this component right here, so uh, it, it comes automatically with the lazy loading effect. That means unless you are your image or your container is not in the view, the image will not be loaded, right? It saves bandwidth, it saves memory. So it's a win-win for everybody. Next thing, if we go ahead under the hood and see what's actually happening if i take a look you can see the component actually is pretty simple in itself um, you can go ahead and see right here as an example this is all you have to do but this component will render this markup right here starting from this particular div tag all the way down to two divs and then an image tag so you can see right here it generates the image using something known as slash underscore next slash image as the generator now this is interesting because this is something which i have seen before with cloudflare as well so cloudflare also has a specific sort of path which is reserved for cloudflare access on your website but anyway this means that you can pretty much just you know just throw in a url and dynamically get an optimized version out of it right so you can see the original image is still present at slash assets slash images slash loan path html5 css3 and if i will go there and you know just go ahead and use that it'll still generate just like that but uh, uh, in this case yep you can just go ahead and get an optimized version instead using the next image optimizer which is provided by Versal free of cost or if you're on hobby plan so that's pretty cool right so you know you get all these variants of images as well so that is a good good decision next up is the internationalization routing support so i do not have a lot of experience with you know setting up code bases with internationalization so i won't, won't really go into technical depths of this that how easy it has made your life but uh, this just basically means that you are now able to support for example if you want your website both in english and hindi then now you can do that either on a domain basis or on a subpath basis that means you can have uh, multiple website on a single domain with multiple languages or you can have different domains itself just like amazon.com and amazon.in works so there's that right so yeah i mean it's a good feature for people who have strict requirements for internationalization but for me as a developer i do not have a lot of use for it yet then another super cool feature is next.js analytics and this comes baked into Versal platform if you're using Versal directly so 
just to give you a peek of what this is, I have actually enabled it on Vercel dashboard for CodeNAN. You're gonna now get an analytics icon like this. And once you click on that, it will gonna show you some scores based on how much percentage of, you know, the best percentage of users you select. So you see, if I switch this to desktop, we get a score of 80, which is, you know, not very good. I'm still working on it. I'll, I'll just see how this can be improved. But yeah, the idea is now Versal supports, Versal provides you with access to this nice information, the web vitals, right, which is pretty much um, sort of the standard of web performance these days. And Next has done this because I have read somewhere that uh, Google is going to consider some of the web vitals now for SEO purposes as well. So yeah, I mean, if Next.js can provide you with information like this out of the box for free, that's that's a good thing, right? And it's free for hobby plans. So if you're on hobby, that is that is the free account or you know, your personal, your personal GitHub account, then you're gonna get that for free. So yeah, that's again a very good feature. I would uh, definitely use the Next.js analytics to tween up, tweak up this number. And uh, yeah, because I have seen in the conference, they have been saying all the time that, you know, you are able to achieve 9,900 score right here, 95, 9,800 score. So definitely this is something I would want to work on code down. All right, next up, what we have on the next 10 is Next.js Commerce. Now this is something I do not, would not really uh, uh, go into a lot because I don't really know exactly, um, you know, the use cases right now. I mean, I understand that you can spin up a e-commerce store, but uh, I'm not very sure if this would be easier or more difficult than having a, let's say a WordPress with a Shopify plugin or maybe like Shopify itself, right? So. I don't know, I, I have to like play around a little bit with the Next.js Commerce first of all, and then I would probably, I can probably get back to you with a detailed video if you want. If you want it, you can let me know in the comments below and I'll just prioritize this. So yeah, I mean, Next.js, Next Commerce comes obviously with all the features which uh, are available to Next itself. And I think they include a bunch of them by default as well, you know, in that, in the, no, it's, it's just all, next features itself right so these are next features so yeah there's that next up is we have react 17 support not a big deal but uh, there you go right next i think react 17 worked out of the box with next uh 9.5 as well but uh, now they have officially supported it so that's good there's another change which they have made i have yet to experience this but i'm pretty sure this would work is that get static props and get server side props are now fast refresh enabled. By this, what I mean is that now if you make a change in get static props method or get server site, it is automatically gonna reflect on your page, right? So you do not have to manually reload the page, which you have to do up till now. Then this is also something which is, uh, which is a change. I'm not very experienced with MDX as of now. So again, not gonna get into that, but yeah, there's that. Then this is something interesting to me because this, because of this, I wasted, I think I wasted about an hour or so on the code base on code dump today. I'm tell you, I'll, I'm going to tell you why, because, uh, next day says that, Hey, now you can go ahead and import CSS right away from the node modules. But what I was using is I'm using Monaco editor, right? You might have seen that if you go to classrooms and pick up any, let's say URL shortener project, if you enroll in it you're gonna see that basically you get that practice interface, right? So this editor right here, which is just gonna appear in a second. Um, yeah, this editor right here, this is Monaco editor, right? Uh, basically the editor which powers VS Code. So what was surprising to me was that, uh, I mean, I, I probably misread the feature. I tried to convert my existing custom webpack configuration, which is, you know, a fully custom webpack configuration for loading CSS into the default one, which Next.js provides out of the box, because this is finally the feature which I was waiting for, or so I thought. Now this feature does not tell you that if date picker module, that is the react date picker module in itself imports a CSS file, then it will not work, right? So I wasted a couple of hours on this today making Monaco editor work with next 10, but I was not able to do that. 
So if you think I have been doing something wrong or maybe if I, you know, just misread what these guys are saying, just let me know in the description, not really description, the comments below. And uh, yeah, let's just discuss because I think this is not very useful. I mean, it is useful, but if you have that problem of, um, you know, node module importing a CSS file within itself, then it does not fix that as of now. So yeah, there's that. Next up is, uh, let's see what else do we have. This is also a pretty cool feature that now you do not need an as attribute with the href tag on the link. So you no longer have to write the actual template of the link as well. Next.js is automatically just gonna uh, figure it out, right? So it's, it's pretty cool. Would help you save a couple of seconds every time you're creating a link, right? Because I always had to go back and forth for the uh, placeholder or the dynamic slug which I was using as the file name. So that will help me save at least a couple of seconds on every link. The next code mod is also something which you can use to update parts of your code automatically. But uh, you know, you always have that find and replace with regular expressions, which is probably brings you close to a code mod uh, only. So there's that. Another pretty cool feature, which we finally are getting with Next.js is blocking the fallback. Now, you guys know if you have ever worked with Next.js and tried to create a blog, you might have faced this problem that when you create a new blog post, the first render of the blog post would be empty, right? And a lot of people worry about that. Hey, what happens if Google visits my blog post and it does not see anything at all? I lose the benefits of SEO and, you know, Next.js was supposed to do that. So all that stuff is now possible with Next10. With next end, these guys are solving this case. Now you can say fall back to blocking instead of true or false. Um, in the blocking mode, what's gonna happen is that it will pretty much behave like how it will behave in fallback false, that is directly serve view the page. But instead of uh, sending you the message of, you know, router.is fallback, um, it will directly wait for the page to become ready, first of all, and then it will send you. So the difference between fallback true and fallback blocking is that now on the first render, the very first window where next does not has information on what the page should look like, it will actually delay the network request itself from the server. So it will stop, it will not respond from the server unless it gets the page and then it will respond it. Which is personally what I believe should have been the default behavior all along, right? But better late than never. So this is pretty cool, right? So. I don't see any possible use of using fallback true now because uh, unless your response is way too slow, then you should always use fallback blocking because that is a much better user experience as well, as well as you get that sort of benefit for search engines as well. So yeah, that's that's basically it for next 10 and I have already upgraded to next 10 on CodeDam. So if you visit codedam.com, you are actually running next 10, right? So this is a next 10 project. So that's all for this one. If you like this video, don't forget to like and subscribe. Visit codedam.com if you want to become a better, better developer. We have learning paths and all those nice and fancy courses and hands-on practice classrooms. So there's that. That's all for this one. I'm gonna see you in the next video pretty soon.